Hi, Internet. Welcome to the Greg Troyan YouTube channel here with another rocker reaction. I'm Greg Troyan. I'm a rocker. I react to things. Uh, today, what are we reacting to? Boom, we are reacting to the Skyler Sisters from Hamilton. So, um... You know, brief uh, disclaimer, I've heard this song before, but I do react to stuff I've heard before on this channel. Um, like I said, I'm a rock guy, but I also love the theater. Uh, grew up on Disney musicals uh, and, you know, saw a number of, you know, fun musicals uh, in the theater before. Never saw Hamilton. Uh, sort of missed out on it because I was, you know, busy gigging in Nashville. So at the time... You know, this was rising to the top. I was busy with my own music career. Um, nowhere near as successful, obviously, <laughs> you know. But it just, you know, I was busy at the time this came out. I was aware of the hype, but never really bothered to check it out. Saw it on Disney Plus over the weekend. It was amazing. Uh, watched it again today. Um, still amazing. And uh, I wanted to take the time to... Um, you know, once to ride the hype train, but also like take the time to dis dissect what I think is musical brilliance. Um, I sort of wrote off the play a little bit when I heard, oh, hip hop musical, because I'm generally not a rap guy. I like some of it quite a bit, um, but it's just it's not necessarily my cup of tea. Um, but what Lin Manuel Miranda did uh, throughout this entire thing is is brilliant. He's a brilliant composer. I've you know respected him before this, and I have even more respect for him after um, witnessing this. I think the hype is well deserved. It is a masterpiece, and so I picked uh, the Skyler Sisters to react to because I felt it's a piece that encompasses a lot of different aspects of this musical and does them so well and sort of um, can help someone who maybe isn't like a hip hop head understand um, why so many people are thinking this is brilliant. Because when you just hear rap musical, a lot of people are, like, are rolling their eyes or maybe not taking it seriously. Um, but there's uh, there's a lot of great stuff here, and I think this piece uh, exemplifies it. So the lead vocalist in this track, we've got um, Renee Elise Goldsberry, Philippa Shu, uh, Jasmine Cephas, uh, Jasmine Cephas Jones, sorry, and Leslie Odom. Um, all of them are great. So the the three ladies play the uh, the Skyler sisters, and then Leslie Oldham plays Aaron Burr. And uh, I do recommend you know watching it on Disney Plus. Um, really, really great. But um, I want to you know get into the song. It's an unscripted reaction, so I don't necessarily know what I'm going to say. Um, but I just you know there's so much to dissect that I'm sure I'll have a lot to say. We do the pause on the channel, so if you don't like the pauses, um, listen to the entire piece per first, then come back because this is for the analysis uh, and critique. There's nothing rich folks love more than going downtown and slumming it with the poor. They pull up in their carriages and gawk at the students in the common just to watch them talk. Take Philip Schuyler, the man is loaded. Uh-oh, but little does he know that his daughters Peggy, Angelica, Eliza, sneak into the city just to watch all the guys. It so, you know, when you hear that, that sounds, you know, very much like a, a very standard uh, hip-hop song, um, but with amazing, amazing delivery, um, you know, especially when you when you watch the, the live version, like Leslie Odom just freaking kills it. Um, but, uh, you know, he delivers a, a wider range of emotion throughout the show, and in this song, his character is mainly portraying um, sort of modern hip-hop swagger in the context of this piece, and I think that's good because... It helps give a modern contextualization to the lifestyles of the people that you're witnessing in this scene. And so it's like, oh, these, you know, rich people from the 1700s, how does a modern audience relate to them? The the lines and the way they're delivered, um, you know, gives you that very, um, like, urban perspective of... Uh, upper class society, and I think it's uh, delivered absolutely brilliantly. And I think the different tonality of the voice, where you know he will shift his pitch, even though he's rapping, when he shifts his pitch, there's implied melody. And I actually think uh, that is the way that I generally prefer rap is with the the difference in pitch, because I think that it offers you um, uh, a chance to to really um, like ma make it stand out more, where you don't want every word to be monotone. And so the 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 clever delivery makes that section very powerful. But uh, the song gets even better, rewinding just a hair to get back into it. The city just to watch all the guys. It work, work. Angelica. Work, work. Eliza. And Peggy. Work, the Skyler's. Angelica. Peggy. Eliza. Work. Yeah, so um, this uh, one thing that Hamilton does, which I think is a, you could give a legitimate critique of it, is that. Um, 
there are certain lines in the songs that are just like, here's us explaining the history behind it in case you're not a history expert, which in some ways makes some of the pieces feel a little bit like a history class. Um, but I think that so, and I think some of those lyrics um, maybe falter a little bit and come off as a little bit clunky, but I think overall... Um, the lyrics are extremely clever. And so this song is just like giving you the et's position where the characters are literally like saying their names in songs so you know who they are. Um, but, you know, uh, musical theater is very, you know, blunt, hits you over the head, lacking the subtlety. Um, but you've got three amazing female singers. Uh, the uh, the girl who is playing uh, Peggy. Um, yes, uh, Jasmine Cephas Jones. Um, she is doing something that's sort of more common in musical theater where you have like the the high pitched, like kind of whiny, kind of bratty vocal, um, which is appropriate when she's playing, you know, the younger character. Um, but I think that's, um, you know, it's something that you notice in like a lot of musicals, like it was in Wicked and a whole bunch of other musicals where you have a character with that kind of voice. Um, but you know, you you're gonna just get some a really amazing vocals coming up. I'm gonna rewind just a hair. Peggy. Eliza, Daddy said to be home by sundown. Daddy doesn't need to know. Daddy said not to go downtown Like I said, you're free to go But look around, look around The revolution's happening in New York New York Work! It's bad enough Daddy wants to go to war People shouting in the square It's bad enough there'll be violence on our shore New ideas in the air Look around, look around I'm looking for a mind at work. I'm looking for a mind at work. I'm looking for a mind at work. Whoa, 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 work. Woo. Yeah, so the thing is not the entire, you know, there's a reputation of it being, you know, a rap hip hop musical, but a good chunk of it is is sung. And so it has, you know, uh, very fast rhythms, uh, like a hip-hop or rap song, but it's still, you know, that's like more of an R&B thing, but there's still a lot of elements of, um, of uh, a theater in terms of the, the writing, the sort of like the chord progressions, but then you've got, you know, this really uh, intricate hip-hop beat, and the thing is, the beats are never, like, generic. They're always very interesting rhythmically which I think is, is very impressive and helps keep uh, the audience engaged. It, you know, if they were sort of like the simple, generic, boom, 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 like, yeah, I think that would get very boring quickly, but the fact that the rhythms are so, like, tight throughout means that you as the audience never lose interest, and it, it feels very dynamic, because I was wondering how they would make these songs feel dynamic and interesting, and just they're, they're always, you know, offering, you know, some fun flavor that you don't quite expect, and it's just really, really great. I'll rewind just a hair, get back to it. There's nothing like summer in the city, someone in a rush next to someone looking pretty. Excuse me, miss, I know it's not funny, but your perfume smells like your daddy's got money. While you slumming in the city in your fancy heels, you searching for an urchin who can give you ideals. Sir, you disgust me. Ah, so you disgust me. I'm a trust fund, baby, you can trust me. Yeah, that entire section is, is pure fire. Um, the lyrics are really clever because it's making a, a historical figure like, you know, Aaron Burr feel like a, a guy with uh, some swagger trying to pick up chicks. And uh, it's it's very interesting how, you know, it it makes it feel so contemporary and alive and, ma and gives you just a new perspective on that character because, um, you know, these historical figures were at one point, you know, just young men <laughs> trying to pick up girls like that's and I think uh, the fact that it gives him this cool hip hop swagger and fits in very well in the piece just you know really great flow and once again very clever lyricism you know I just it, uh, all those lines I could just go line by line and say it's great but like that entire section was pure fire pure excellence really clever really cool rewind just a hair trust fun baby you can trust me I've been reading Common Sense by Thomas Paine So men say that I'm intense or I'm insane You want a revolution, I want a revelation So listen to my declaration We hold these truths to be self-evident That all men are created equal And when I meet Thomas Jefferson oh. I'ma compel him to include women in the sequel Work!
tons of great stuff in that section. Um, when they started in the line about, you know, um, once she starts talking about Thomas Paine uh, and then starts, you know, quoting Jefferson, that was a part where I was worried it would come off as clunky. But then uh, the line about, you know, um, including women in the sequel, so saying, um, shouting out equal rights for women, um, I think was, you know, very clever, especially given, you know, the modern context that, you know, this is being consumed in. Um, you know, it, it does a really great job of, um, you know, showcasing sort of the flaws of the founding fathers and the founding of the country, um, but, you know, still showing the, the positivity, sh sort of showing both sides of the coin, Um but, you know, that entire section, um, brilliant. And, of course, like the lines about the greatest city in the world when, you know, this is about New York City, uh, performed in New York City. And there are a lot of people who believe New York City is the greatest city in the world. And there's a certain, um, you know, magic that's associated with the city. Like it's become a mythic part of culture. And so when you hear these amazing singers talk about how they're living in the greatest city in the world, and if you hear this in New York... Like, you know, that will hit, like, an emotional core with you, which I think is really, really clever. And, you know, the, the talk about how lucky they are to be alive right now is an interesting perspective because many people would say to live in the past where, uh, you know, technology wasn't as good, people were more likely to die from disease, and you're living in the middle of a revolution, so many people would not feel lucky to be alive during a wartime but the characters who are excited about being present when history is being made and being excited to be alive when they have the potential to witness the future and the better future coming, uh, and they're appreciating and loving being alive during that time frame, that kind of optimism is uh, very refreshing and makes the entire thing seem more mythic and uh, keeps, you know, it, it adds... The, the mythic qualities of, you know, the greatest hit in the world and we're so lucky to be alive right now makes this feel bigger than perhaps it is, and it's already a big event. And that's sort of what musical theater does. It takes things and pushes them to these extremes and is, you know, an extreme expression of emotion and ideas. And I think that um, this piece um, absolutely succeeds with that and isn't at the point where I think it's silly. I know a lot of people think that theater is silly, but I think the emotional resonance is is strong enough where I'm I'm sincerely and sincerely impressed. Let's rewind just a hair. <laughs> So that, that build right there was very musical theater, not really hip-hop at all. But the way that that crescendo happened, that is pure Broadway. And so what's, you know, the reason I chose this piece was the way it mixed in the different elements together, where you have that stuff that's very clearly hip-hop, the stuff that's clearly R&B, the stuff that's clearly Broadway, mixed together in this unique way, uh, a melting pot, if you will, which... Um, I just think is insanely clever, and obviously, like, as a writer, as a composer, um, the counter melodies and all the different vocal layers that were going on there is very, very cool, very impressive. So, great stuff. Rewinding just a hair. <laughs> just absolutely killer um just wh what a phenomenal like killer killer vocal part um complex uh difficult to do great harmonies um yeah um i know if you're just listening to the audio uh you, you know i do recommend watching the you know the the musical um, to get the full experience of it, but even just the audio, just, you know, on a technical composition level, all those things 
you know, the the rhythms, uh, the chord choices, uh, you know, the different melody lines, counter melodies, the, the mixing of styles and how seamless it is um, makes just, you know, this piece extremely impressive uh, to me, like, as a writer, as a guy who writes music, uh, or, you know, is a songwriter. I am so impressed with what uh, Lynn manuel Miranda did with this piece. Um, you know, he's a he's a really talented composer, um, and I would say the success of the musical in terms of its quality is well-deserved. I know there's a lot of people arguing about its um, cultural relevancy and whether or not it's good for America at this time. Um, I'm inclined to believe it is. I think that it is um, fair and nuanced enough. Where, um, you know, there are people saying cancel Hamilton. I don't really agree with that. Um, you know, obviously, you know, these were flawed men. And I think that, you know, the character of Alexander Hamilton himself comes off as very flawed in the musical. <laughs> very, very flawed. And so I would say, um, I would say give it a shot. Because in my opinion, this is something that um, deserved the success that it got. Because it is that good. And uh, I don't have any biases for or against it. I just saw it over the weekend and was like, oh, yeah, the hype was definitely justified. I came to the train late and saw it and was like, yeah, that absolutely deserved the success it got. I'm not one of those guys who just hates something because it's popular. The Beatles are my favorite band. Frozen is my favorite movie. Final Fantasy VII is my favorite Final Fantasy. Dragon Ball Z is my favorite anime. Like, the stuff that, like, in many ways is, like, super basic, super mainstream, I'm like... Yeah, uh, I think that just because something is mainstream and has mainstream success doesn't mean it's bad. I think there's a reason why certain things resonate with people. And that's not to say that everything that's super mainstream resonates with me. Like, there's some stuff where I'm just like, ah, I don't really get it. Um, but this I get. It is a, a thumbs up from me. Yeah, I'm going to give this a triple S, just pure fire, pure awesome. Uh, yeah, so this is a, a special bonus video. Um, let me know what you guys thought of this one below. I think it's great. Yeah. So uh, be sure to do the like and the commenting, the subscribe, and all those good things. Have a good one, everyone. Bye.